My weight loss results are so slow. I should probably just do more cardio. Many of us have turned to additional cardio when we want to see better results faster. But often this added cardio can sabotage our fat loss results. And we might see better results by just adjusting our weight training routine. And if you're about to say the diet is key, yes, it matters most for fat loss. However, the most efficient results and most lasting happen when our diet and workouts work together. And when it comes to amazing body recomposition, weight training wins out over cardio in terms of the biggest benefits. Better fat loss happens when we see our training as a chance to build muscle. So how is cardio sabotaging your fat loss? And what are five ways to see better results faster? First, let's ask, why do we turn to cardio in the first place anyway? We turn to cardio in an attempt to burn more calories. And it does, at least to start. But not only do we adapt to not actually burn as many calories over time as we get used to the distance and pace, we can also end up creating too extreme a deficit to start between our training and our calorie intake, which can result in metabolic adaptations. We can actually lose muscle mass through this overtraining and underfueling. Not to mention, we can send our body into survival mode, which means we'll actually find ways to expend fewer calories during the course of our day. This ultimately negates the increased calorie burn from our training. Now, if you're a runner, cyclist, or an endurance athlete, I'm not telling you to stop doing what you love. I'm just saying that if your goal is fat loss, don't just jump to doing more cardio to try and burn more calories. What we also don't realize is that doing more, training for longer and harder, especially if we're in that calorie deficit, can simply make sticking to our diet even harder. Ever notice you're hungrier when you start to do more cardio? That's something big we don't consider. How much hungrier we can actually get with more cardio, especially when we're in that calorie deficit. So while undereating and overtraining can itself create metabolic adaptations and hormonal imbalances, it can also make it even harder when we're doing this extra training to stay in that calorie deficit, making our body fight the process even more. And we not only end up giving in and eating, but we end up overeating and overeating for a while. This quickly leads to us falling off our new healthy habits and feeling like we don't have the willpower to make a change. Plus, we end up gaining the weight back and usually more. And let's face it, it's not muscle we're regaining. It's fat. When we repeat this yo-yo dieting cycle, each and every time it becomes harder and harder to lose. While we start to blame getting older or hormonal changes, often it's simply these previous attempts to out-exercise our diet or time that have added up. So how can you stop this cycle and dial in your strength workouts to see the results that you deserve? Tip number one is to address all of a muscle's functions. When you think about a specific muscle group, you have a go-to move, and often they're go-to moves for a reason. They work. However, the more experienced a lifter you are, the more you want to consider including a variety of movements to work specific muscles to challenge yourself. This can also lead to better muscular development and definition because you're addressing all of the actions that a muscle performs. We need to focus on building and retaining the muscle if we want to look leaner and lose fat. You simply aren't going to become the Hulk by lifting heavy. So if you want to see the best results, consider implementing different moves for the same muscle group over the course of the week. If you want to work your hamstrings, maybe you include a Romanian deadlift, but also a seated hamstring curl or a glute bridge and curl. Not only do these moves then address the fact that your hamstrings work during hip extension, so straightening your hips, but they also address their ability to flex or bend your knee. And then even while addressing the hamstring's ability to flex your knee, you're putting your hips in two different positions, extended with the bridge and flexed when seated, to again work the hamstrings in different ways. Use those different postures and positions, not to mention even single leg versus two-legged movements, to progress exercises and challenge your muscles. Tip number two is to extend your rest periods. Now this doesn't mean standing around on your phone for three to five minutes looking at Instagram between sets. But it does mean realizing that if we want to keep working at a true 100% intensity, we need to give ourselves time to recover between rounds. Often when we're short on time or we want to make our workouts feel harder, we cut out rest. But this also causes our intensity to dip. If you want to really challenge yourself to really work muscles, you've got to be able to push each and every round. So use that rest between sets. But this doesn't have to mean full rest either. You can even make sure a muscle group is given time to recover by alternating areas worked in supersets or trisets. This can help you work more areas more efficiently, working one while the other is resting. This is great, especially if you're short on time. And by working more muscle groups in a session while being able to push harder, you'll increase your calorie expenditure during your training session. Tip number three is to push to failure. If you've ever just thought to yourself, I'll do 10 reps and stopped at 10 because it felt hard enough, you need to push harder. Now, this doesn't have to mean you literally can't lift the weight or you face plan in a push up, but you need to push yourself to that point where you wanted to stop two reps ago, but you can still complete the round with proper form. 
you need to make sure you're actually pushing closer to that failure point. Don't be afraid if your workout says eight to 12 reps to even have to put the weights down at six. Rest for 15 to 30 seconds, then finish even two more reps to push slightly past what you could have done in a row. This push almost past failure will help you see better muscle gains and it will truly help you challenge your body. If you wanna lose fat, increasing your lean muscle mass is the best way to boost your metabolism and see lasting results. Tip number four is to use a variety of rep ranges. How many reps and sets? What rep range is best? The simplest and best answer is to use a variety. Focus on building strength and working with those big, heavy compound lifts in that three to five rep range. Focus more on muscle gains with compound movements that make you max out in the six to 12 rep range. Or focus on that strength endurance by working up towards 20 reps. All of these rep ranges benefit each other, allowing you to lift more to drive muscle growth or even have better endurance to recover faster while lifting heavier. The key is really to make sure that you're challenging yourself for the reps that you're doing. No load should ever feel light. And the reps you decide to do may even be influenced by not only the muscle working, but the type of exercise you're including. For isolation moves like bicep curls, you may do slightly more reps working in that 10 to 15 rep range over attempting a five rep max. For heavy compound lift like the barbell row, you might try to hit failure at five reps when including it first in your workout. Both moves and rep ranges can be included in the same workout as you go from a heavier, more compound movement to more isolation exercises to target stubborn areas. Tip number five is to focus on your intensity over doing more. It's quality, not quantity. Too often we think we don't have time to get in the workouts we need to see results. And sure, having a bit more time to train can have its benefits. But if you design for the time you have and focus on quality movements and giving your 100% every time you train, you're gonna see amazing results. So stop making that excuse and stop wasting your training sessions just going through the motions. Too often we increase the number of rounds or reps to increase the difficulty of a workout instead of focusing on maximizing the intensity of each round. Rather than feeling like you have the capacity to do more, figure out how you can push yourself to make the existing rounds feel more challenging. Be intentional and get the most out of every single rep. Don't just go through the motions. This will really help you build that lean muscle mass. And because diet is key, I want you to check out this video with tips to adjust your nutrition in a full day of eating next. And guess what? One of those tips will be about one specific macro. Because if you wanna gain muscle while being in a deficit, macros, and especially this specific macro, matter most. Check out the video to learn why. If you liked the video, make sure to like it, comment below if you have any questions, and subscribe, we're posting new videos each week.